Stokes formula gives an expression for viscous force acting on a small sphere moving through a homogeneous viscous fluid. So the viscous force acting on the sphere depends on three things. Viscosity, no, radius, r, and velocity, v. So how can we derive uh, Stokes formula using dimensional analysis? So to start with, it's important to note that we need to know the dimensions for each of these. So let's first list down the dimensions. So number one, uh, let's talk about the force. So F, dimensions for force are M, L, T, negative two. So we have force. The next thing that we're looking at here is uh, the viscosity. So we're using the symbol nu. Viscosity dimensions are M, L, negative one, T negative one. The next thing is uh, we have velocity v. Or let's start with radius. So radius is just a distance. So dimension is L. Velocity v is L t negative one meter per second. L t negative one. So those are the dimensions. So now that we have these dimensions, let's see how we can answer this question. So since we're saying that uh, the force is depending on these other quantities. We can say force varies with, remember, we can say it varies with, or uh, well before the proportion, let me just redo it, sorry. Force varies with the following, nu, which is the viscosity, times radius and velocity, like that. Now, since it's a variation, uh, we can now rewrite it as F is equals to K no times R times V. Right. Okay, so now uh, let's replace these quantities with their respective dimensions. I'm not going to include K because it just represents a constant. So that's what we're going to have. The dimensions for force. Let's replace them. So force, we have M L T negative two. This is equals to dimensions for no the viscosity. We said um, M L negative one T negative one like this. Dimensions for radius. We said it's just R. Sorry, it's just L. Dimensions for velocity is L T negative one. Now, these are meaningless as they are. We won't know the powers for these three quantities. Hence, we can just say, let's give them powers. For example, A, B, and C. You can use X, Y, Z, or any other three letters, it's okay. So now that we've given them powers, even the dimensions will have their powers A, B, and C, like that. So having done that now, let's push in the powers. Left-hand side. M, L, T, negative two. Here we're going to have M raised to the power A. We'll have L raised to the power negative A. We'll have T raised to the power negative A. L raised to the power B. L raised to the power C. And T raised to the power negative C, like that. Let's put the M's, the L's, and the T's together. So let's see what we get. M, L, T negative two, like this, is equals to, so let's start with the M, so we only have one M this side, so M, for M, M to the power A, let's go to the L, we have L, negative A, we have L, power B, and we have L, power C. Then the T's, we have T, negative A, and T, negative C. So, since the bases will be the same, we're going to add the powers. So M, L, T negative two is equals to M power A, the powers of L. We have L to the power negative A plus B plus C. The powers of T, we have negative A minus C. The bases are the same, so we're adding the powers, okay? So now we are comparing the powers of M, the powers of L, and the powers of T. So here we have a power one, here we have a power one. So for M, 
we can clearly see that the power of m on this side is a, this side it is 1. Let's go on to the power of uh, t. For t, this side we have negative a minus c, this side we have negative 2. But remember we found a, a is 1. So this will give us negative 1 minus c is equal to negative 2, like that. Then um, how do we proceed to find the value of c? We can just push the 1 to the other side. What do we get? We'll get negative c is equal to negative 2. This one will become a positive. So negative c is equal to negative 1. Hence the value of c is 1, like that. So we have a and we have c. How do we find b? The powers of L. So the powers of L, we have negative a plus b plus c. This side, the powers of L, we have positive 1. So uh, a, we have a. a is 1. So negative 1, where it is a. b, we don't have, but c, we have. c is 1. All this is equal to 1. So b minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is a 0. So b is also equal to 1. So we have found the values of a, b, and c. Now what do we do with them? Remember, we're supposed to derive this formula. So picking it up from here, we can say f is equal to k nu. Remember, a is 1. So power 1. R to the power b, but b is 1. So r power 1. V, C is 1, so C power 1. Hence, this just gives us F is equals to K nu R C. Now, not C, sorry, it's supposed to be V for velocity. So now, given this, we have to understand something. Now that we have F is equals to K nu R and V, this is the formula we're looking for, we have derived it. K is a constant. And this constant can be anything. With correct computations, you'll discover that Stokes formula, the value of k is just equals to uh, 6 pi. So the actual Stokes formula is supposed to be f is equals to 6 pi nu r v. But since we don't know the value of k, you can just leave it as k. There's no harm. So we can leave it like that. But the actual formula is this one. So there we have it. That's how we derive. Um, Stokes formula.